be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. So with Firestorm being introduced to the Flash TV show, what we're going to do here is we're going to go over the character of Firestorm. But because the version that we're going to see is going to be Ronnie Raymond, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering the first iteration of Firestorm, the original Firestorm. That is to say, Ronnie Raymond and Martin Stein, who were combined into a single being. So Ronnie Raymond first appears in Firestorm issue number one in March of 1978 and was created by Jerry Conway. But the problem was that this first appearance took place during the DC explosion. Now, for those of you who don't know, the DC explosion, or as fans and critics refer to it, the DC implosion, was effectively the New 52 before the New 52. By 1975, DC had found itself falling behind Marvel in sales due to the launch of a multitude of Marvel titles like the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and Spider-Man. And so as a result, DC was looking to bring in new readers by consolidating and relaunching various titles, but instead the exact opposite happened, and over 60 titles were cancelled while a handful of new titles were made, but among the new titles that were created was Firestorm. Now with Firestorm's initial introduction, what we found was that we picked up with a high school student named Ronnie Raymond, and the way Ronnie Raymond is depicted to us is vastly different than the way we were normally introduced to high school students. More often than not, high school students who would go on to develop superpowers in comic books were usually introduced to us as societal outcasts. For whatever reason, they just didn't seem to fit into a social group as a whole. But stepping away from this archetype and bringing his experience writing various Spider-Man stories from Marvel Comics, Jerry Conway introduced Ronnie Raymond as a person whose stance as a social outcast had more to do with self-confidence than anything else. Ronnie Raymond was introduced as a star athlete, as a star football player who already had the attention of a girl named Doreen Day. And in an interesting twist of circumstances, what Jerry Conway did was give us a situation where Ronnie Raymond was being taunted by a school genius, a student named Cliff. Now, Jerry doesn't really go too in-depth into the tactics that Cliff would use in taunting Ronnie Raymond, and in truth, this is really just designed to give us an idea of where Ronnie stands in relation to those around him. But what we find is that Ronnie Raymond's feelings of being a social outcast will eventually lead him to joining a group of people who are protesting the implementation of a nuclear power plant. And what we learn is that this group is led by a man named Eddie Earnhardt, and after seeing Eddie Earnhardt's interview on the local news, this gives Ronnie the idea that not only can he make new friends, but that he can also demonstrate to Doreen that he's an intelligent person and that he's also aware of worldly issues. But what this circumstance also does is it allows us to, I guess, transition to a man named Martin Stein. Now, Martin Stein is introduced to us as a college professor who's spearheading this whole nuclear plant program, but the problem surrounding Martin Stein involves one of his former employees, a man named Danton Black, claiming that Martin Stein had basically stolen his ideas. And so as a result, the entire nuclear plant program program is put on hold until an internal investigation can be completed which will more or less vindicate the idea of whether or not one of these people is right. But rather than submit to the investigation, Martin decides to activate the nuclear power plant. Now Jerry Conway gives us an explanation as to why this has happened and what Martin Stein's rationale here is that I guess ultimately, if the entire nuclear power plant goes down, then the delay will most likely be attributed to the fact that there's some kind of a malfunction. And by virtue of pressure from anti-nuclear groups, people who were against atomic energy, the government will eventually back away, leaving Martin with nothing to show for all of his work. But what we find here is that the paths of Ronnie Raymond and Martin Stein cross when Ronnie arrives with Eddie Earnhardt and his group to Martin's power plant. And what we find is that Eddie Earnhardt is actually not the person he had made himself out to be when he was on an interview. And the way this plays out is when Ronnie Raymond basically learns that the plan of Eddie Earnhardt is to plan a timed explosive that would render the entire uh, plant inoperable. And when Ronnie objects and threatens to notify the police, Eddie knocks both Martin and Ronnie unconscious. What we also learn is that Danton Black has apparently arrived at the nuclear power plant. And Danton Black's entire purpose in being at this power plant is to basically uh, download the files of Martin in order to verify his falsified claims. But again, what happens here is that once Danton Black 
Mike actually arrives, he realizes there's a timed explosive that's prepared to go off. But before anybody can actually leave, what we find is that Ronnie Raymond begins to wake up, but the nuclear explosion detonates. And as a result, Ronnie and Martin are fused together and Danton is knocked unconscious. And so from here, we learn that Ronnie and Martin have been fused into a single body with Ronnie's mind being in control of the body and Martin's mind existing as a background character. Now, initially, Jerry Conway established that this was due to Martin having been unconscious when the merge initially occurred. But what we'll find in later stories is that there's actually a lot more taking place with regards to the minds of Martin and Ronnie as they exist inside the body of Firestorm. But what we see taking place here is that Ronnie begins to manipulate the various energies that are available to him in his Firestorm form. That is to say, he manipulates the ability to, uh, to I guess, manipulate atoms as well as uh, project some kind of energy-based plasma. And so he goes on the, I guess, goes on the purpose of tracking down Eddie Earnhardt and ultimately stopping Eddie Earnhardt from detonating a bomb at his next target. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward a little bit and we're going to pick up with what happens after Eddie, or I guess after uh, Ronnie Raymond and uh, Martin have converged into this single body and the events that take place as they unfold with the Firestorm stories. So following the origin of Firestorm in issue number one, what we found was that Jerry Conway continued to expand on the concept of Martin Stein and Ronnie Raymond combining into a single being. But what's really interesting here, though, is that this was a concept that didn't really exist very often in terms of comic book characters. And this is what really struck a chord with fans. In addition to this, what we saw was that DC was basically giving Firestorm legitimacy by introducing Superman in issue number two. And in fact, in issue number two, what we found was that Superman goes as far as to say that Firestorm, if he kept along this path, would eventually be nominated by Superman to become a member of the Justice League. But the problem that we saw was that by issue number five, Firestorm was canceled due to the DC explosion and it was rolled over into the Flash uh, solo series with volume one, issue number 289, and it was presented to us as uh, several 10-page featurettes. Well, what we found was that in addition to this, Jerry Conway had also had a Firestorm written into the uh, Justice League of America. And so from here, Jerry Conway continued to basically draw on his experiences from Spider-Man and that what he would do is present circumstances whereby Ronnie Raymond would continue to deal with balancing the life of being a student in addition to, I guess, being a superhero. And again, this really began to touch with a lot of fans who were reading uh, reading Firestorm comics, who were teenagers reading these stories, more so for teenagers who felt like they were left out. And what I mean by this is that because a lot of the teenage superhero stories that we had seen had revolved around teenagers who were considered nerds or geeks, this story was able to resonate with teenagers who weren't of that group, who, you know, with teenagers who were, uh, who were jocks or teenagers who simply just didn't fall into the category of being kind of nerdy. And so what we found was that Jerry Conway had began to establish the mind, or I guess the concept of what had taken place between the minds of Martin Stein and, uh, and Ronnie, Ronnie Raymond. And what we found was that the idea of the two of them coming together to form Firestorm was not a permanent thing, that in fact, the two of them could separate. But the difference here was that Ronnie Raymond, because he was conscious when the merge happened, because he was the conscious mind of Firestorm, he would always remember what had happened. He would always remember the things that he had done as Firestorm. But because Martin Stein was subconscious, because he existed in the background of Firestorm, he didn't. And so for him, he would simply just black out and then suddenly wake up somewhere else. And so what had happened is that Martin Stein began to turn to alcohol here. He began to turn to various uh, things that ultimately cost him his entire life, cost him his job, and so on and so forth. And so eventually what happens is that Ronnie Raymond meets up with Martin Stein to effectively explain to him what was going on. Now, Martin Stein doesn't initially accept this, but what happens is Ronnie Raymond begins to uh, present him with various pictures showing the merge taking place. And so Martin Stein acquiesces and admits that this may very well be true. And so what this does is it allows him to basically tap into the subconscious memories of himself and ultimately begin to recollect everything that had taken place when he was Firestorm alongside Ronnie Raymond. But again, because we're going to be focusing or because we are focusing on the initial appearance because of the, I guess, the first version of Firestorm. What we're going to do here is we're going to bring this video to an end, but let me know if you guys are interested in seeing further iterations of Firestorm. Let me know if you guys are seeing various versions of Firestorm. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.